Classification. Classification is the arrangement of organisms into orderly groups based on their evolutionary relationships. So, for example, um, when you do a family tree, let's say this is you, and this is your sister Mary, and this is your brother John, and here's your mom and dad, and mom had parents too. They were grandma, oh man, I hate when it does that. Grandma and Grandpa. Come on, come back. Boo. There we go. Okay, so pretend this isn't here. Okay, so Grandma and Grandpa also had other kids. They had uh, Uncle Peter and um, Aunt Sally. I don't know. Anyway, Sally had a couple kids too. And so Sally married, I don't know, Joe, I guess. And she had a couple kids, Colleen and Aaron. And so this family tree will show you that you are more closely related to Mary than you are to Aaron. And so that's really what classification, in part, that's what classification is about, except we're not doing it just with your family. We're looking at every living thing on the planet, which is kind of a big undertaking. So what are the benefits of classifying, aside from it being really cool? It accurately and uniformly names organisms. So, for example, it prevents misleading names like starfish. Hi, starfish. And jellyfish. Hi, jellyfish. These things are not actually fish. So here's a starfish, here's a jellyfish. These are fish. So marlin and dory and Nemo are all fish. They have vertebrae, they have scales. Um, and these folks are not fish. We just call them that. So here's a family tree of them. Chordata, that means you. So mammals are here. But also fish. Um, this thing is actually a mammal, which we'll talk about later. Um, let's see, amphibians like frogs, et cetera, et cetera, birds. Um, so anyway, those are chordates. So fish fit in here. These are starfish. They're not, they don't even have a backbone. Um, same thing here. These are jellyfish, not very closely related to fish at all. And here's another example. Um, it will also prevent misnaming stuff like a seahorse. So a seahorse is not really a horse, it's just a really, really cute fish. We also use the same language, either Latin or Greek, for all names. And so it prevents confusion in naming um, things with different languages. So for example, here's a skunk, and these are all the different ways that you might say skunk. Well, that's not true, but it's a few of them. So we would say skunk. Um, if you are, would this be French? Un Muffete, maybe, and Ein Stinker, I would guess that's German. Ontario, I don't know, Spanish maybe, Cheche, I have absolutely no idea what language that is or how to say that. But anyway, these folks do. But they don't speak each other's languages. And so, if you call it by its scientific name, um, then everyone will know what you're talking about. Memphitis, Memphitis, or something like that. So, standardized naming, here's what you gotta know. Binomial nomenclature. Bi means two, and so everything has two names when you write it down on an MCAS or in a scientific paper someday when you publish papers. You can think of me. All right, um, you give it a genus and a species name, and you have to be careful with the way that you write it. It's very, very particular. The genus has to be capitalized for the first letter, and species, well, everything else should be lowercase, including the species. If you're typing it, you can italicize, otherwise you have to underline it. So capitalize the genus, but not the species. Italicize it if you're typing it, or underline it when you're writing it. So this is the American robin, kind of a cute bird. And its name is funny. So its scientific name is Turtus migratoris. And if you're writing this um, on an MCAS, do it right. Turtus, underline it, capitalize the T. And migratorius. Underline it, make everything lowercase except that first T in the genus name. And annoying orange never works. Okay, so here's an example of what you can do just with naming. So we have these three organisms here. We have the giant panda, the polar bear, and the grizzly bear. 
And so the grizzly's bear, grizzly bear's name is Ursus arctos. That's the genus and the species name. Here's the genus and the species name for a polar bear, Ursus maritimus. And here's the genus and the species name for the, the giant panda, Aelurapoda melanoleuca, something like that. So I want you to decide who is more closely related based just on their names and pause this and figure it out and I'm about to tell you. Okay, so here goes. Look at this. Um, they all have different species names, but if you look at the genus name, this one and this one have the same genus name and this one does not. So the polar bear and the grizzly bear are more closely related to each other than they are to the giant panda. And classification groups. So there's, um, shifting gears here a little, there's a hierarchy of groups from broadest to most specific. And so the broadest one is domain. This is saying, hey, is it a eukaryotic organism, which we learned about in our last unit, or is it one of the types of prokaryotes? Kingdom, meaning is it animal or plant or whatever. And then we get more specific, phylum, does it have a backbone? Class, order, family, genus, species. The bad news for you is that you have to memorize this. Here's what I want you to write in. Domain is the broadest taxon, or if you don't like the word taxon, group works just fine. And species is most specific. And it starts with an S. That's a good thing, right? So let's take a look at an example of that. Here's an example. Here is, um, a, it doesn't look brown, does it? Um, you're going to pretend this is darker. This is a brown bear or a grizzly bear. So here's the grizzly bear, and its um, name is Ursus arctos. Let's um, take a look at that. So its species name is arctos, or, yeah, arctos, I don't know. If you look at the genus name, Ursus, well, there's other organisms there. There's the black bear, too. Now let's go up a level. We're going to include even more organisms. So down here, the species name is most specific, and the kingdom, well, actually, domain would be even more general, but... This is the almost the most general. We're getting broader and broader and broader and more general. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's the genus. You're getting more than just this grizzly bear. You're getting the black bear too. If you go up another level and you're less specific, more general, you're going to include the panda bear now because the panda bear, although it has a different genus and species, has the same family. Go up one more carnivore. Now you're including things like a fox go up another group, the mammals, now you're including things like um, the squirrel. Actually, you would be included in here, and so would a whale, and um, who else would be in here? What's another mammal? A sheep. Go up one more to chordates. Now you're including things like, um, like snakes, or amphibians, like frogs, or um, fish. Anything with a backbone, plus a couple. Now go up more, even more general would be any animal, so that would include sponges and jelly, uh, jellyfish and starfish like this one, and um, worms, anything that's an animal would be here. So that's an example of going from very general to very specific, and um, this grizzly bear fits into all of them. I'm sorry, it's a white grizzly bear, it's kind of weird. So here's the way that I remember it. Dumb King Philip came. Over, or good, great, suit. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. That's how I remember the whole thing. Dumb King Philip came over for a great soup. Some of my students use gooseberry soup, I think, but whatever. Do whatever you need to do to remember it. I have other students who like this one better. Dumb kings play cards on fat green stools. So I know he's not a king yet, but maybe one of these days he will be. So this is Prince um, William, I think. And did you know that there are Kate and William um, playing cards? <laughs> That's a little bit crazy. But anyway, you can pretend they're playing cards, and you can pretend they're on fat green stools. I don't know. I couldn't do much better than this. <laughs> okay. Incredibly interesting stuff here. Who's more closely related? A wolf, a Tasmanian wolf, or you? And I have to give you a hint with this one. This thing right here is not a placental mammal. It's a marsupial, meaning it lived in Australia. That's your hint. So pause this and think about it for a minute, and I'm going to give you the answer.
Okay. Here is um, the classification of these organisms. Here's you. You're eukaryotic, meaning your cells have nuclei and other organelles. You're an animal, meaning you are heterotroph and um, you can move at least in part of your life cycle and you don't have a cell wall. You're a chordate, meaning you have a spinal cord, so you've got a brain and a spinal cord. And um, you're a mammal, meaning you're, um, if you're female, you have boobs, you have mammary glands. That's kind of funny, huh? And um, let's see, you have hair or fur. Eutherian, um, I, that means that, um, it means you're a placental mammal, plus there's a couple of other things in there, but mainly placental mammals, which means that when you, if you're a girl, when you get pregnant, um, you're going to have a placenta that develops that helps nourish the baby. Um, you're a primate, so you're related to um, chimpanzees and um, great apes. Your family is hominidae. Um, there's actually nobody else in that family anymore because all of the other ones are extinct. Your genus is Homo, and your species is Sapiens, so you are a Homo sapiens. I really, gosh, what's wrong with me? Should I have this, whoops, I should have this underlined. Here's the gray wolf, and here is the Tasmanian wolf. Poorly named, because look, wolf and wolf looks like they're related, but look, the Tasmanian wolf is a marsupial. That means it um, has a teeny, teeny little baby when it's born, and the baby goes into a pouch, just like a kangaroo. So these Tasmanian wolves are way more closely related to kangaroos than they are to wolves. And the wolf is way more closely related to you than it is to this Tasmanian wolf, which looks just like it. So this is um, an example of convergent evolution, where two organisms kind of do the same thing, live in the same kind of environment, um, hunt the same kind of prey, and they end up looking alike, which is... I think is so absolutely amazing. So these things are not very closely related, um, yet they look so much alike. Um, the Tasmanian wolf is probably extinct. I think there were sightings of it not too, too many years ago, but um, they think that one's extinct, or at least almost extinct. So let's take a look at it. Here's you, you adorable thing. And here's um, a wolf. And here's the Tasmanian wolf, a placental mammal. So doesn't even have, even though it looks just like this one, doesn't even have a placenta, which is sort of amazing. So the group there is you and the wolf. Whoa, you guys are more closely related to each other than either of you are to this thing that looks just like that thing. That is just crazy, huh? It's kind of funky. Okay, here's classification of humans. Your kingdom, uh, sorry, your domain is eukaryote, meaning you have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. You are an animal, meaning you are multicellular and you can move and you eat stuff. You are a chordate, meaning you have a, a brain and a spinal cord. You are a mammal, meaning you have hair, and if you're a girl, you have boobs, mammary glands. You are a primate, um, which generally means you're adapted to climb trees, although people have pretty much lost most of that. You're in the family hominidae, which means adapted to walk um, upright, and actually your, um, there aren't any others in that anymore. Australopithecus was another one in there, but they're all extinct. Your genus is Homo, which means large brain and tool use, and your species is Homo sapiens, and notice how it's italicized. Cool, huh? And uh, that's people. So when I ask you, actually I think it's on the next one, yep, name yourself using binomial nomenclature. You'll have to do this on your quiz on this subject. You need to write Homo sapiens, you need to make sure H is capitalized, and you need to make sure the whole thing is underlined and that nothing else is capitalized. Write it clearly. It seems a little picky, but um, it's actually really important. And I think I'm going to end there.